come, you say you will when you won't. Oh, baby, do, baby, when you don't. Let me know, honey, how love feels. Here's the truth now, is love real? Honey, don't. Hey, good morning. Welcome to another episode of Open Air with Tom Remington and... Uh, That'd be me, Tom Remington. Hey, I'm just hanging out here with my buddy Jedediah. He's one of the bitter people. And um, if uh, I, I keep promising you that I'm going to have him and, and his, all of his buddies on, on the show here someday, and, and we will, and we'll learn about uh, you know them clinging to their, their guns and religion, and uh, supposedly they're bitter people. But hey, for right now, Jed, do you have a seat over here? And uh, you can keep an eye on me, make sure I do my show all right today, and then we'll get back to that big discussion we was having about Second Amendment. Hey, good morning. Um, it, look, I'm sure you've probably all, it's, it's, you know, it's shown up in my email box, I don't know how many times, this, this story about, uh, oh, you know how, you know, somebody can go out in, in the woods and they can, they can put some, some corn down on the ground and the wild pigs will come and eat the corn. And then after a while, pigs realize it's a it's a free place to get some food, and uh, so they you know every day they come and get their free food, and so the farmer or you know whoever puts up one section of fence alongside of the corn, and the, the pigs don't mind because they're getting free food, and he puts up a second section and a third section, you know, and eventually when the pigs come and get their free food, he put, puts up the fourth section, and pigs have lost all of their freedom, but they don't care because they, they're getting free food. And of course the analogy there is, you know, the dangers that uh, that we run into when we, you know, when we start giving our people free stuff, you know, uh, it's too easy, and uh, they, they, they become addicted to, you know, uh, surviving off the hind tit of, of government and, uh, and whatnot. But anyway, I was thinking about that the other day, and it reminded me of an old story uh, that's similar in, in nature. Uh, it's a pig story, but it's also about, uh, you know, the you know, we get into certain habits and that sort of stuff. But it's a, it's an old story, and it goes something like this: um, the dumb the dumb farmer's name was Clyde, and uh, he decided that he was going to have himself um, some pigs. He wanted to raise pigs because he thought, well, one he liked pigs, but he thought he could make a little extra money by by raising and selling pigs. So he went and got himself an old sow, and he brought her home, and he threw her in. He threw her in a pen, and um, he went to bed that night, and he got up the next morning, and he went out and looked. And there were no baby pigs in there, and he really didn't know why. And he did this for several days. And uh, one day he was downtown at the feed store, and uh, he, he ran into a, a, a farmer that he knew that lived across town. And he was telling him about his, his problem with not being able to you know, have any baby pigs, and uh, so the the farmer told him. He says, "Clyde, he says, you got to take your pig and get it bred." And uh, he says, "Well, where do I do that?" And he goes, "Well, that depends on what you want." He says, "How much money you want to spend, and what quality of pig you'd like to have." But he says, "I tell you," he says, "down the road from you, about a mile." He says, there's the Thurlow farm down there. He says, you take your pig down and see less, and for five dollars, he'll breed your your sow with one of his boars. Now, his pigs aren't the best quality pigs, but, you know, you get some pigs out of it. Or, he says, what you could do is, uh, he says, about five miles down the road um, <clears throat> is the is the Heckenin farm. And, uh, he says, you, you, go, you go over to the Heckenin farm, and for $10, he'll breed one of his boars with your sow, and it's better pigs, but it might be worth your, worth your money to do that. But he said, if you really want the best pigs that money can buy, he says, 10 miles down the road is the Cooley farm. And if you go there, he says, it's going to cost you 20 bucks, but he'll breed his prized boar with your sow and you'll have some of the nicest pigs around. So, you know, Clyde went home and he thought about it and the next day 
he decided he, he better take his pig down and get it bred if he wanted some little pigs. Well, Clyde don't have a have a, uh, a car or a truck or anything like that, so he put his pig in the wheelbarrow. And uh, he, uh, wheeled a, he wheeled the pig a mile down the road to the Thurlow farm, and he paid less his $5 and had his pig bred. And he put her back in the wheelbarrow and wheeled her all the way back to the farm and put the pig back in the pen. The next morning, Clyde went out and he looked in the pen. There was no baby pigs. Oh, gee, he couldn't understand. Why aren't there any baby pigs here? Well, he says, I should have spent the more money. So he went and got his wheelbarrow again. He put his pig back in the wheelbarrow, wheeled her the five miles down the road to the Heckenin farm. And he paid his $10, had his pig bred, wheeled her all the way back to the farm and put the pig back in the pen. Well, the next morning, Clyde got up and he went out and there was no baby pigs. And he was just totally distraught. He didn't know what he was going to do. Well, he says, I guess I should have took the advice, he says, and gone to the best pig to begin with. So he went and got his wheelbarrow and he put the pig in the wheelbarrow and uh, wheeled a 10 miles, 10 miles all the way down to the Cooley farm. Paid his last $20 and had his pig bred. <sighs> Pushed that pig all the way home. Geez, you know, it was just about dark by the time he got back home with that pig. Put her in the pan and he went in and went to bed. Well, you know, he woke up the next morning and Clyde was so darn tired he couldn't even get himself out of bed. So he called his brother up, Clarence. He says, Clarence, he says, you got to come and help me. He says, I'm so tired I can't get out of bed. So Clarence comes over to the farm and, and uh, see, comes sees Clyde in bed. And Clyde says, Clarence, go out to the uh, pig pen. He says, and tell me how many baby pigs we got this morning. So Clarence, he hustled out to the pig pen. He come back a few minutes later, and Clyde says, Well, how many we got, Clarence? Clarence says, He says, There's no baby pigs. He says, But your sow's waiting in the wheelbarrow for you. Hey, before you go, I got some words of wisdom for you, a little something I learned the other day I wanted to share with you, kind of the thought of the day. Did you know that Americans spend more money paying overdraft bank fees than they do buying vegetables in this country? Have yourself a nice day, and we'll see you next time right here on Open Air with Tom Remington. When you don't let me know, honey, how love feels. Here's the truth now, is love real? Honey, don't 